you've almost definitely heard of West Coast Rail, who operated the Warnable line from 1993 to 2004. But what about Hoyts Road lines? Well, if you're clicking on this video, I'm assuming you either know about it and want to know more, or you have zero clue what it is. So without further ado, let's get started. Early Life Hoyts Road Lines was founded in 1930 by Eric and Edith Hoy. The company operated buses and road coaches for its first few decades, getting its start operating buses from Wangaratta to far-off destinations such as Shepparton and Bright. The Victorian Railways even contracted them to run a bus from Porpunka to the Mount Buffalo Chalet. This won't be the only connection Hoyts would have with the railways, which you'll see later. Hoyts also ran a bus service to other places in the Ovens Valley, such as Kiwa and Mount Beauty. With Helen Watson now leading the company, it quickly expanded into also doing charters, school bus runs, and even department contracted services, such as a daily Albury to Adelaide via Melbourne bus called Speedlink, with Hoyts Road Lines being a sort of innovator and pioneer in its field of road coaches. In 1979, the newly formed company Deluxe Coach Lines hired coaches from Hoyts to help operate their Sydney to Perth via Melbourne and Adelaide service. When the Bright Line was closed in 1987, the bus service to the Mount Buffalo Chalet was extended back to Hoyts' place of origin, Wangaratta. Hoyts' empire expanded even more in the 1990s, with the cutting of many regional passenger rail services, in no thanks to Jeff Kennett, several tenders for either multi or unimodal transport were put out to private companies to run regional services for them. Hoyts Road Lines won a seven-year contract to run the Melbourne to Cobram service, which began operation from the 1st of July 1994, being the first private rail company to operate rail services in Victoria since the Altona and Laverton Bay Freehold and Investment Company Limited handed over the Altona line to the government in 1924. Contractual Requirements Hoyts accepted two contracts, the first being with the Department of Transport, which mandated them to provide a public transport service up to standard, and being paid an agreed rate per passenger per sector, the sectors being Melbourne to Seymour, Seymour to Shepparton, and Shepparton to Seymour. The second contract drawn up was a contract with V-Line to supply them with locomotives, driving crews, carriages, as well as maintaining locomotives, driver safe working training, the implementation of safe working, and also food and catering services. Operations Staff From the 1st of July 1994, as per the contract with the Department of Transport, Hoyts decided to run their services to Cobram using two modes of transport, from Melbourne to Shepparton via rail and bus the rest of the way. I suspect this was the case for two reasons, the most obvious being the much worse track quality beyond Shepparton, but also Hoyts would already have a bus depot at Shepparton, which meant little to no additional infrastructure. All station staff, conductors, and buffets were employed by Hoyes. Drivers were trained and hired by V-Line. As mentioned in the contract, rather than purchasing their own fleet outright, unlike West Coast Rail, Hoyes just leased their stock from V-Line. Hoyes employed 11 staff, with over half of them being former V-Line employees. The former V-Line employees included the Shepparton Station Master, two station staff, and five conductors, all were trained by V-Line in safe working. Hoyts conductors could only sell tickets to, to their own trains and coaches, with passengers trying to get to a V-Line destination having to also walk to the ticket office at Spencer Street or from a separate ticket agent at Shepparton. Services Hoyts would be obligated to run 26 services per week. These would be made up of two return services from Melbourne to Shepparton and one return service from Shepparton to Cobram from Monday to Saturday each week and on Sundays only one return train would operate, making up the obligated 26. They would be connecting buses at Cobram with other buses, and some of the bus services to Cobram would be extended to Tuckermore. Trial bus services were implemented for six months to Finlay and Berrigan in New South Wales, which both proved to be unsuccessful. With a service to Griffiths added later, Hoyts was also in charge and served the usually unmanned stations at Nagambi, Murchison East and Marupna. Trains usually made the journey in 2 hours and 15 minutes, stopping at Broad Meadows, Seymour, Nagambi, Murchison East, Marupna, and Shepparton, which is actually faster than V-Line by about half an hour. Around 80 to 100 people would disembark or get on at Shepparton, and another 160 to 200 along the corridor. 
By 1995, a 5.5% increase in patronage was recorded, with an average of 188 people, which was relatively in line with patronage growth as a whole. Advertising was put up around the same time the service was reintroduced, with some locals believing it was fully cancelled. The usual contest was a free car and set, with capacity for 206 people, which was usually hauled by an N-Class locomotive. The locos didn't receive Hoy's Road Lines deliveries and logos, despite them having one. This was because of operating convenience, being able to use any locomotive and carriage on the Shepparton service. When necessary, an extra passenger car or van could be added to the usual contest, although at an extra cost to Hoy's. During the daytime layover, Trains were lightly cleaned by Hoys at Shepton during the daytime layover, and thoroughly cleaned and inspected when stabled overnight. End of rail. The initial contract ended in June 2001, but it was extended a further three years. During the time the contract was in place, V-Line was privatized and was taken over by National Express in 1999, with the contractual obligations fulfilled by National Express. They withdrew in 2002, and V-Line was given back to the state. In August, the state started negotiating with Hoyes to extend their contract to 2006, but this was never followed through on. V-Line resumed operations of the Shepparton Line and Cobram Coach on the 30th of June 2004. End of Hoyes Road Lines Hoyt's Road Lines ceased operation in 2005. After 75 years of operation, the company began to crumble, beginning with the loss of the rail contract. The Adelaide to Albury bus service was purchased in August 2004 by Dyson, with the rest of their operations and routes sold to V-Line in June 2005. What remains of Hoy's today? After the V-Line buyout, they took to work basically doing nothing to the rolling stock and stations. I'm not sure what happened to the staff, but presumably they all got hired back by V-Line. Today, V-Line still serves the same stations as Hoy's. Some of the North East Main Line stations added, and a couple of the Shepton Line stations rebuilt as part of the Regional Rail Revival project. Frequency and patronage on the line has also been given a major boost, with 5 return trains per day, from Monday to Friday. Until 2022, N-sets were used on the line, being extended to 5 cars per service rather than 3. Today the services run either one free car or a pair of free car velocities. V-Line still runs a coach to Cobram, which now all have been extended to Tockermore. A coach also runs to Griffiths, which does also stop at Finlay. Inside the Shepparton Station building was a Hoy's Roadline branded clock, which seemed to be replaced sometime after 2008. Thanks for watching this video about Hoy's Road Lines. I hope you all enjoyed it. This is a shorter video as I have a few longer videos coming out in the coming weeks. If you have any suggestions on what topic I should cover next, then leave them in the comments below. If not, I'll see you later.